I'm sitting here. I'm gonna have to. Uh, I'm gonna get my October 2016 diary ready since it's the last week of September, and so I thought I'd get ready. So I have October. I thought I use October purple for October. So then I get my felt pen and I write here October. Two thousand sixteen, and then I put it in the folder. I've been doing this for years. Everybody has their method when they do their diary or their journal, how they do it. And this is how I do it, and then I put it in here. And there it is. It's all ready for October. October. So then I put October on this one. So that's done. Now I got two for October. As I mentioned, uh, when I get through the 15th, the middle of the month, I go to the second folder. Because usually during the month, I, uh, I uh, go through, I put, I start on the 16th on the, on the second folder. So that's what I'm gonna do. And then we have November coming up and then we have December, and then we have the end of the year. Today I ended on my diary on page 804. So tomorrow, September the 25th, I'll be on 805. So that's what I did today. I didn't really write much today. I think I wrote just Two and a half pages. I was kind of out of it today. I got up this morning about 6.30, went through the morning. What did I do this morning? I don't think I went anywhere I can remember. Oh, that's right, I had the book nook today. So I, I left for their library uh, used bookstore at 9.30 because I wanted to check this book out of the library. This is called The Rightful Heritage Franklin D. Roosevelt and the Land of America by Douglas Brinkley. The reason why I got this book is that in reading the novel Serena by Ron Rash, one of the, th the things going on the novel, and this, the novel takes place historically at the beginning of the Great Depression, which is around the late 30s. And the novel is focused on the, this called the, Bus, the Boston Lumber Company, which is run by the main, is owned by the main character here, George Pimpleton. And Pimpleton, he's, he, in the novel, in the beginning of the novel, he, he's in Boston, he meets Serena. Serena is this woman who supposedly her family owned a big lumber company in Colorado. But supposedly Serena's parents and her brothers and sisters all died from a, uh, a fever. There was a, an, uh, an academic, I can't remember what it was. Uh, I think it was the influenza, I can't pronounce the word, but there was this major academic, uh, not academic, but you know what I'm talking about. There was this 
it killed millions of Americans. Anyway, her parents all died, her siblings all died. Supposedly, Serena then went to, she got education, and she winds up in Boston, and she hooks up with George Pendleton, and they get married after knowing each other a month. Anyway, I won't go into the whole novel, but in the novel, the, the United States government wants to the land that, that Pimmington owns, that he's, he's cutting the trees down, they wanted, the government wants to make it into a national park, which becomes the, Smoky, uh, the Great Smoky National Park. And that's where this comes in, because under Theodore Roosevelt, no, excuse me, under Franklin D. Roosevelt, and under Theodore Roosevelt, also Douglas Brinkley wrote this book, the Wilderness Warrior, Theodore Roosevelt, and the Crusade for America. Both these men were into environmentalism, conservationism. They were into uh, preserving great, vast lands, not only in the North Carolina and the Smoky Mountains, but throughout America. I was just reading today that Fra uh, Franklin D. Roosevelt was instant, instrumental in starting the Olympic Peninsula National Park where our son Josiah and his wife Hannah often go camping and hiking at there in the state of Washington. So anyway, in the novel, there's this, the government wants to buy the land owned by Pimenton and some of his partners. They're offering money but they're saying if you do not take the money that we'll just take rightful domain which means they'll just take it by force they'll just take the land and evict, uh, evict the people off it and that's what they did in some situations the people who lived on the land the the mountain people they were just and the farmers and the lumber companies were told to leave so they but first they offer them money supposedly john Rockefeller Jr. back in there in the time of the Depression gave the government five million dollars in order to buy land to be made into a national park, national parks. So anyway, I wanted to read about that here in this book and so I checked it out. Franklin D. Roosevelt and his plan to turn the Appalachian Mountains into the Great Smoky Mountain National Park. So I got that. I had this one in my library. This is my own book. I don't own this one. I might get it. I don't know. I'll look and see how much it costs used. So that's why I got that out. Yeah, you read uh, in Serena about how they, the Pimmington and his wife Serena, what they're trying to do is before the government evicts them, they just are working night and day to strip as much of the force the land as they can and just it's it's just devastating what they do to cutting down all these trees and and how many men lost their lives through accidents it's the, the novel is full of gory stories and of men who are who lose their lives out there chopping down these trees on sides of mountains and it's kind of kind of horrible so at the book nook, the only thing I found at the book nook today that I wanted to take home, I looked and looked, but I did find this novel that looked kind of interesting. This is my free book for uh, volunteering. It's called Nobody Is Ever Missing, a novel by Katherine Lacey. It says here, without telling her family, Alicia takes a one-way flight to New Zealand, abruptly leaving her stable but unfilling life in Manhattan. As her husband scrambles to figure out what happened to her, Iria hurdles into the unknown, testing fate by hitchhiking, tactically being swept into the lives of strangers, sleeping in fields, forests, and public parks. Her perilous and often surreal encounters with the people and wildlife of New Zealand propel Iria deeper into her deteriorating mind haunted by her sister's death and consumed by an inner violence, 
Her growing rage remains so expertly concealed that those who meet her sense nothing, nothing, her sense nothing unwell. The risk Irea takes on her journey are paralleled by the risk Catherine Lacey takes on the page. In urgent, spiraling prose, Lacey whittles away at the fury within Irea and exposes the very real, very knowable anxiety of the human condition. And it goes on. So it looked kind of interesting. Free book. So that's why I took. As far as what I read today, I'm, I just, like I said, I've been kind of out of it. I've been, re I read at the book nook, Hermeneutics. This is the new book I got in the mail the other day, Hermeneutics as Apprenticeship, How the Bible Shapes Our Interpretive Habits and Practices by David R. Starling. I also looked at this book today. I was reading, I mentioned this a couple months ago. I was reading this book, Introducing Biblical Hermeneutics, A Comprehensive Framework for Hearing God in Scripture by Craig G. Bartholomew. I also got this book out last night. I've read this in the past. This is Graham Goldsworthy, Gospel Centered Hermeneutics, Foundations and Principles of Evangelical Biblical Interpretation. And I got this out to look at tonight. Uh, I wanted to read about uh, like the problem of the New Testament, use of the Old Testament, things like that. This is Enduring Authority of Christian Scriptures, edited by D.A. Carson. There's a bunch of essays in here by leading uh, new Christian scholars. I got this last year, and once in a while I get it out, look at. I've also been looking at this book today, The Virtuous Reader, Old Testament Narrative and Interpreter Virtue by Richard S. Briggs. So yeah, I've been looking at those books off and on today. Just trying, you know, resting my mind from reading Serena, because it's kind of a, in the novel Serena, there's a lot of, there's murder, there's, there's, there's all these terrible accidents happen to these men out there cutting the trees and and uh, but I'm really enjoying the novel and I'll, I'll probably get back into it next week. Oh, I also got from the book nook. You know, I collect Bibles. I think I, I found this one today: the New Oxford Annotated Bible, New Revised Standard Version with the Apocrypha. Uh, this is an ecumenical study Bible. I don't have this Bible, so. I got that today. So that's what's going on in my book world today. Here's Saturday on the 24th. It is 7.52 at night. I have the house opened up. Still drying off the carpet from yesterday. So I hope you're having a good weekend. That you have a new, a good upcoming new week. We're coming to the end of this month. Today it felt like autumn. So anyway, so I'll sign off until next time. Bye.